I know him from the street. Hey, sorry, Papa. It's kind of a last thing. Yeah, it's a policeman. Why does someone turn me around? Oh, what would you tell me? It's Friday night. A policeman has just been shot. They just hijacked him, him and his girlfriend. They take his his car and the, the, the gun. What's going to happen now? There's a backup that is running up and down to search for the car, the car that is, has been hijacked. So this is a regular occurrence? Yeah, this is a regular occurrence situation that is happening. Ayanda, this is a deep slot. Welcome to deep slot, Ayanda. Nights like these are familiar. South Africa's murder rate is now at a 20-year high. And the fear is that there may be worse to come. Patrolers, Patrolers, let us give the, the law enforcement their time to do their job. SAFM 104 to 107 nationwide, leading the conversation. The Talking Point with Kathy Mosasana. The president has decided to approve the deployment of the army. We understand 3,300 personnel that will now be deployed to help fight crime. That is coming, coming where the soldiers will have to patrol the streets of South Africa like the police. How much more can we endure? Say so, on, everybody says, so you know what? Your dad's in a better place. And, yeah, uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't supposed to be like that. Mm. You don't live here anymore. No, 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 we don't live here anymore. Since the incident happened, yeah, we had like, security gates, everything. We felt that we were doing everything to keep safe. <laughs> you also have burglar gates out here. Yes, yes. Wow. The fencing around there is all electrified fence. We did a lot of tree tiling, vault cupboards. Yeah. <laughs> You did a lot of work. I do laser engraving, so I made them. Oh, that's so cool. It's so this was going to be your forever home? This was going to be the forever home, yes. <laughs> yeah. This was the room where we had our family time. This was, this is the most art so. Hmm? The most art so of everything. You can take you can take a moment if you need to. Yeah, yeah and I mean the way he, he, the way he left was was uncalled for. Um, he never, he, he was never someone that hurt anybody. Um, he died in a way which was, it, it didn't take long, it was fast, it was quick. And then I to experience a lot of pain, but yeah, you know, it's still, it's still not, still not nice. Not even say goodbye or anything. And um, my kids, I mean, the, the pain for them, it's a lot. Can you tell me what happened that night? We were returning from town 
open the gate, close it behind us, open the second gate, close it behind us. A person was standing there with a nine millimeter weapon in his hand. And he said to me, I'm a shh, said to me, didn't say anything else. And then I look in, there was another guy with another nine millimeter and a AK-47 weapon as well. My daughters also heard the guy saying the shh in the car. They were inside the back of the car still. And then I thought, what can I do? And I went to my husband, what's happening? What's going on? He like shook his head and he got out because he has his own weapon. So he obviously got it ready to make sure that he can protect. Then he just started shooting and it was sparks. My body blocked out the sound. I couldn't hear the sound. That's when the shot through my shoulder. I went to him and collapsed and, yeah, he was, he was, as he was sitting next to the door with his weapon was still there. Duane was 46. He lived on this remote farm with his wife, Ingrid, and their two daughters. Duane was a very hands-on father. He built them a tree house. He built them a foofy slide. It's over there. And he went on it himself to make sure it's safe <laughs> enough with them. So after the incident, I was in ICU for three weeks. During that time, they had to drain my lung because of the fluid in the lung caused by the, the shot. I'm so sorry, that's horrific. Thank I, you. For you to even have the strength to retell that story so early since it happened. How are your daughters? No, not well. It's really for them a very, very traumatic time. And every time I have to speak to someone about what's happened, it, it just refreshes it with them. Mm -hmm. And they have been going for counselling, but it just, it just, I think it's still a long journey for them. Mm -hmm. Very long journey. From the moment we met, we just clicked. That night when I met him, he said, well, have you ever ridden on a bike? I said, no. He said, well, now you're going to. <laughs> <laughs> that one was... Oh, that's beautiful. He Isn't never it? used to take selfies. It was like the first selfie. A lot of good memories. The attack happened in August. No one has been arrested. How do you feel about the state of crime, you know, in the country right now? I feel it's a, a dire situation. It's chaos. People are working very hard at being farmers to keep our country on the go. There's shortages of everything. And then you have to fear for your life to be a farmer. It's unlikely anyone will be arrested for Duane's murder. The detection rate for murder across South Africa is less than one in five. These farmers are taking matters into their own hands. They're part of a pressure group called Afri Forum, who campaign on behalf of Afrikaners. They have more than 300,000 members nationwide. So now we're basically just regrouping, making sure everybody's here, making okay. it counted for everyone. There's one or two new guys who haven't done this route. Okay. <laughs> En dan gaan ons weer een paar plaatsen waar ons weer die draden is geknipt en zo. En uh, van daar af gaan ze de truin een beetje opstuur en net kijken wat aan gaan. Het is te sterk vanaf. Truin gaat niet werken. Helemaal te sterk. Ja, en hij wordt erger. Ik heb het laag gekeken. Okay. Ja. Oké, okay. maar los ons dan niet bij huis. Ja. Dan moeten we het maar weer gaan kijken. Oké. Hij is maar bij jou. Wat are you looking for on the route? Any signs of movement, signs of people cutting fences, branches broken. 
signs that people are targeting a specific area is. They tend to cut the cables, electrical cables, and sell that copper. Which team are we with? Team one. Team one. Team one. Yeah. Everybody be safe. Thanks. Yeah. You too. Are the torches off because it's supposed to be undetected? Okay. Yes. Other words, we give ourselves away. They were here last night. You see all that stuff on the on the roof? On the all scaffolding. They took it down last night. Oh. So they were trying to steal those metal pipes? Yeah. As well as the cables? As well as the cables. Uh, and you found them in the act? No, no, no. I just came in this morning and, and you everything saw. was gone there. Let's go up here. There's another pump that they stole. That's a water pump? Yeah, it's electric motors. They stole about six weeks ago. Three guys couldn't carry that one, but they put it on a trolley. So what do they do? Will they scope the area for a while, then come take the things? It's every now. There's a good chance for it. You'll see someone now. The end of the public road. Okay. This is now people's property. If there's anyone here now, they mustn't be here. It's okay. Now this thing has been cut. Oh, I see it's been cut there. Yes. Yeah, and you can see the footpath right through here. There it goes. So it's a well used mm -hmm. footpath. So if you see that light, and that is where the with the guys with the trucks, the users, the dealers are staying. Okay. Yeah. So this is the path they will be taking, yeah. And usually when it's so quiet, like you can start hearing dogs barking. South Africa's crime problem cuts across all racial and ethnic lines. Sixty kilometers down the road, another volunteer patrol is about to set off. Oh, he just gave me a can of red bull. We're in Deep Sloot, a township on the outskirts of Johannesburg. So, what are you expecting? to do tonight? We go to the ground. We going to do stop and search inside the, uh, the township. Whoever we meet with during the night, we have to search that person. What are you searching for? The weapons that uh, they might be having. Guns, knives. People are scared in township. Who's next? Who's going to die? What are some of the dangers you're likely to face on a night like tonight? Deep Sloot is in the hand of the criminals. And we know that once they found out who are patrolling here, we will be a target. And we are ready for and that. And we are ready for that. And we will fight against the crime that is in Deep Sloot. We need to take our Deep Sloot back. We need to defend our Deep Sloot. This is our community. This is our children. This is our women. We need to chase these thugs away. What are you prepared to do? We, we want to go street by street, uh, trying to search the thugs. Wherever we get on the street, if it's late, you need to tell us where you're going and what's the reason. The team is working closely with the local municipal police. <laughs> The following day we decided to refer here extension number 11. 
But before we even set off, the team is called into action. He's running. I think she's injured. I don't know. I think he stabbed her. A young woman seems to have just been attacked by a young man. As the meeting was starting, they heard her scream. They asked her what, what was going on. He approached, trying to explain what happened, but once they realized she was injured, I guess he got scared and ran away. It's a reminder of the dangers these volunteers are facing. Are the police going to drive along? Yeah, they, they are coming with us. Okay. Yes. Uh, Arban and patrolers, le shatala re na. This kala kibela din kamu shi to us believe. Ons wacht net die verdaan nie. Waarom kom ons? Wacht hier nie so in die aand of Afrika pad. Wat we gaan doen nou, we gaan leef hier, ja? Three of us are just gonna see that everything is safe. If everything is fine, we'll come back and fetch you. Okay. Okay. Fun in you. Good, good. Yeah, yes. Where's the party? I'm coming from the tavern. I'm going home. Okay. All right. Sharp, sharp. We'll be like Bush Telegraph. The word will go. Okay, you come on the crew, bro. 18 feet. Going back in? Yeah, we can go back in. The farm patrol has stumbled across an abandoned building. We are looking for stash. Maybe they, they put something away. It, it was like a nightclub, a strip club. So it, it's recently a close, recently abandoned? Yes, recently and abandoned. So when thieves steal items, they usually park them here they, they, to come uh, back for them for them yes. later. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because we we're about 150 meters away from the R104. And so, so this is where they would pick their items up. They they will they will stash it here and then they will pick it up and go, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's usually the pickups will be anything from four in the morning to even six o'clock. Mm -hmm. They will usually load some plastic bags on top and then they will hide the stolen oh. property underneath, yeah. So what are we looking for? Irrigation pipes, irrigation pumps, electrical cable. They will usually come and start stripping the cable oh. to get to the copper. Okay. And that is what we are looking for here. The smoke, it means there was recent activity here. Can you see? I think the sides might be hot. Chance is very good that maybe they put them coming in. They might have been here just minutes ago. Minutes? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Jojo? Jij mag bijvoorbeeld niet. 
<laughs> it seems that whoever was here has been frightened off. You've been doing this for a while and it's, it feels normal to you, but do you ever step outside sometimes and realize how dangerous, how not normal this is for a regular citizen? We are living in cages and that is abnormal. It shouldn't be like this. Checking around what's happening and before you enter a farm, before you get out of your vehicle, then that's why it becomes a way of life. In Deep Sloot, the volunteers are unpaid and badly equipped. The risk to their lives is very real. Is this when he was younger or is yeah, it a recent picture? He was like for the past three years. He's so young. So he was 21? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's not looks like me. He doesn't look like you. <laughs> he looks like his mom. Yeah. <laughs> Like a little mm. bit like you, but yeah, you can tell he looks like his mother. <laughs> he had a grown man haircut, yeah. yeah. Mm. It's the current hairstyle. Yeah, even the trouser, I used to put it here. I said, no, okay. no, no. when you pass here, you have to make sure your trouser is 100%. Yes. Two years ago, David's son, Alpha, was shot and killed whilst out on patrol. How would you describe the kind of person Alpha was? He was a cool guy, respectful. So you were surprised to hear that he was a poet? Yeah, it's like it came as a surprise to me because I know he's a shy guy, but he was not a coward. I understand that this might be difficult for you, so oh, if you... Yes. Yeah. Can you tell me what happened to Alpha that night? They were patrolling. They blow the whistle to alert the other guys that there was a criminals. Unfortunately, he was the first person to reach the place and he managed to catch the gentleman. The other thing, having a firearm, he managed to shoot the alpha on his arm and he fell down. Unfortunately, he didn't make it. I'm trying to accept the situation, but it's still painful. Or he left a big gap in my life that I'm not gonna able to replace it. I mean, it's painful. I'm sorry. He was trying to protect his life, my life, and everyone. So he was not stealing, he was not part of that. So he was fighting against the crime, which is good to me. What do you think of the crime situation in Deep Sloot now? It's very bad, very bad. It's out of control. Eh? Every day people get robbed, eh? people are dying every day. And what do you think of the patrollers? I really appreciate what they're doing because they're disturbing these people. But I pray day and night that they can be safe. There's no law in this place. Outside of a war zone, South Africa is one of the most dangerous countries in the world. Yes. We are approaching the bridge that is the most dangerous bridge in the extension one. Why is it the most dangerous? It's where most of the things are happening here. People are being killed in this bridge. There were more than 27,000 murders last year in South Africa. That's 45 people per 100,000. For comparison, the US rate is six. <laughs> Come on, come on. 
And what are you looking for on the streets? We are doing stop and search. And if you are a criminal, you've got something that is dangerous to our community, we're going to take it. And if you're not going to uh, comply with us, the Shambhog will, will apply also to you. This is a traditional leather whip. Does that mean you'll beat him? We have to. We have to. Even last night, someone was shot and killed. Now the kids are parentless. If we don't fight against them, they will end up entering into our houses and kill me in front of my kids. So it's a trauma to my kids. Do you live with the fear of them attacking you yeah, in your home? Yeah, even if when you hear the sound of the gunshot, every night it's like a shooting range. Wah, 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 wah. Then we are not safe. If you're a young black male living in a township like this, then you're most at risk of being murdered. But the fear of crime permeates across South African society. This is our COC room. This is where we, we plan everything. Okay. I monitor this every night. If there's a call during the night, I have a radio in the house as well. Mm -hmm. You steer the ship. I'm here to observe. <laughs> yeah. I just monitor that this goes well. You guys will be moving in this area a bit later. Ik heb in Jeke kan jij niet voor mij bevestig alles zijn een vijf vijf van ons of was dat enige problemen geweest? Stefan is in charge of all the radio volunteers in this town. They call in with tip-offs and alerts. How many radio members do you have? We've got about 500 radio members. That's active radio users. They cover the 11 sectors. So if there's a problem in that sector, they will call it through to us. What if the scene is still active and there's shooting? Well, if it's active, they are all weapon trained. They use bulletproofs. Of course, you never know what to expect on the scene. We always say there's already somebody that's bleeding. We mm. don't want another person bleeding on the mm. scene. So when we leave here tonight, it's just going to be a patrol? No calls have been made? Nothing yet. Police budgets have almost doubled in 20 years, but trust in the police has fallen. What I'm going to ask you is wear your bulletproofs. If you don't have a bulletproof jacket on and you're not trained, if the vehicle stops wherever we are, which is not part of our group, please move back behind the vehicles. In a few minutes, we'll be heading out to tonight's mass patrol. The patrol is going to be happening in cars today, and we're told that the area is much bigger. And so we will be out for longer than we were last night, trying to find any suspicious vehicles, trying to see any suspicious activity. Again, like last night, no alcohol, okay? You guys, we are allowed to carry weapons, but for self-defense, We've got to comply to the rules. Please, concealed carry. Dierwald is what is known as a first responder. As a first responder, you are armed. You can't go to a gunfight with a knife. That's yeah. how it goes. You're prepared to use your firearm and be I'm in a gunfight. Yeah, I won't hesitate to protect my family. That's it. <laughs> if I must come into a scuffling between other guy and you will hurt me. I will I won't stand back for him. As a volunteer, you also are volunteering to protect others and use your firearm to protect others. Yeah, in the correct way. Mm. I'm mm. not like I said, I'm not the law. Yeah you're not, yeah. I'm not the law. Mm. So if I'm I'm in a, at a scene and I need to protect myself then I'll do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can I ask why you do this? Well, 
It's something I do with them, but it's also for our community. Mm. Someone has to step up. So yeah, you step up. So why did you take it upon yourself to do something so dangerous? Because I actually enjoy it. <laughs> why? What do you enjoy about it? I think it's just the fact that you can be part of something. You can be part of the prevention or part of just being seen and, and now the now let the criminals know that we see you. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah, mm -hmm. we've had enough. I think it's just a basic thing of enough is enough. Mm -hmm. But I'm still not clear who or what they're looking for. How do you determine who a suspect is? And what intelligence do you use? Carrying uh, bags and then uh, in, at night. Why does he carry a bag at night? Most of them, they look suspicious. Some how? of them start running. So you're saying how they react to you is the intelligence you use to determine whether they're a suspect or not. Yeah. But I mean, people can have bags. There was one uh, incident, half past one in the morning. The guy was walking uh, with a bag. Mm. And he refused for us to uh, see what's in the bag. So, I, so he took out a knife and wanted to stab us. But what right do you have to search a civilian's bag? We were on a suspicion that there was stolen things in, in it. So we opened the bag and there was copper in the bag. So he stole copper somewhere. It's not like we just stop everyone. That's not the case. You hear the people on the, on the groups, WhatsApp or phone, tell, tell us, listen, they just stole copper cables from me, or just my fence has been cut. So the intelligence will come from a WhatsApp message. Someone will tell you what to look for yes. based yes. on something that's yes. just happened. Yes. People walk by. It's not mm -hmm. like you can stop and ask, listen, what is in your bag? They usually give the uh, description, the, you know, the person is wearing like this and this, and we suspect it. Let's go, there's the guys. The people passing by, they know the green lights. They know, yeah, it's quite safe. Just hold that guy, hold that guy. These shopkeepers say they've just been robbed, and the volunteers, who say they're here to assist the police, think they have a suspect. Can someone with the torch here? Shift on your animal. Be throwing something, so we're trying to check. So, why no? What's happening? They held them hostage. They took everything. Uh, their cell phones. I think they they hide something. Those things that what they took it here. Oh. He slapped him. Why were you hiding? Why were you hiding? Why were you hiding? I was not hiding. Why were you, why were you Peter? Where are those other guys? What do you want this time of the night? Eh? Why, what do you want this time of the night? What do you want this time? What do you want this time? There's no evidence that this man has done anything wrong. They're questioning this young man about his whereabouts prior to when they found him. They suspect that he knows where the two men who allegedly robbed the household down the street are. Are you letting him go? Yeah, we let him go. The guys that took things here, we will meet them. And once we meet them, they will meet their maker because now it's not a pop and place what we are doing here.
Stefan, what are you looking for? Just for people moving around, maybe. Finches that cut. At this stage, I feel like normal, but it's not. It's an abnormal activity yeah. that's happening. Mm -hmm. But do you have any anxiety? No anxiety. You get used to it, but your senses, mm. you are fully alert. Mm -hmm. And that's why you will notice something out of place immediately. Okay, all right. What's happening? They noticed some fences cut and maybe some cables that were stolen. Yeah. yeah. They're just going to check. According to the World Bank, crime is costing the economy at least 10% of its GDP each year. Three weeks ago, in a matter of about four or five hours, there was five incidents. Two were killed, one is still in hospital. They were shot, and that's farm workers, and that was the, at the end of the month. The intel that these suspects got was, okay, it's by weekend. The easy targets. Easy targets, yeah. It brings the farming to a standstill, the production. So it has a big influence, because they steal the cables, they steal the pumps, and it costs them money to keep it operating and to fix it again. Those pumps are very expensive. Are we coming out? We can get out, yeah. I'm just going to leave the car. I'm running like this. Why have we stopped here now? Because this is one of our points. There's houses with people that we want them to see us that let's just beyond. The people living there is not traditionally from here. They don't live here, they don't work here. They're residents here? They rent here on a semi permanent basis. Well, well, let's put it this way they live here for about two months mm -hmm. and then they move on. So, what we do is we just started pushing back. We're just sending the message we are still here. So, these people are suspects to you? Yes, but we've got no proof. So, you haven't actually found anyone who lives there who's proven to have attacked any of these houses. Correct. But you suspect that they, they will. Correct. There are clear dangers. Who holds these patrollers, who are mostly armed, to account? The message that white farmers are being targeted and killed has gained global attention. Amid all that's going on, President Trump has decided to wade into South African race politics. Last night, the president quoted Carlson saying the South African government is now seizing land from white farmers. He also cited the, quote, large-scale killing of farmers. Trump's support was welcomed by AfriForum. Deputy CEO Ernst Roots said, our lobbying has had an impact. We have spoken with a lot of people who've had contact with President Trump. And in a recent post on X, Elon Musk pushed this narrative further, saying he'd heard of calls for a white genocide in South Africa. There's no evidence farmers are at any greater risk than the average South African. So how long have you been here on this land? Oh, on this farm, I've been here roughly about 11, 12 years in small properties, but just adjacent to each other and you can farm it as one. But the horrendous violence often associated with these attacks reinforces the deep sense of fear within the farming community. You have to plan accordingly getting your property safe. We have to lock up our sheep every night just to make sure that you have something to work for tomorrow, that you will have an income in a couple of months again if you sell the lamb. If anything happened to me, about eight guys lose their jobs. Each night you go to bed, you pray. Every morning is, is God's grace giving you a new day. Is the way you live now sustainable? Yeah, it's going to be difficult to carry on like this because you work full day and at night you do patrols. You do get exhausted. After two weeks doing four or five patrols a night or doing four or five hours a night, I don't think you can carry on like that. Have you seen the international media reports around farm attacks? 
I've seen a few, yeah. What have you seen? The first word that pops up, it's a white genocide. Um, and that's a, that's a very big word. What do you mean when you say white genocide is a big word? How much is enough? How far does either farm attacks or murder or anything on white people, how far does it have to go before it's called white genocide? Isn't one life lost too many? Mm -hmm. Even is one farm worker's life too many? It's, it, it's, it's already too many. It's, it, it's, it's unacceptable. If one thing can get changed in this whole country, the crime just has to disappear. That word shouldn't even exist. Why does it exist? It's just, it's, it's wrong. And that's why I say, one life lost is one life too, too many. Are you saying that this is just a crime problem? It's not a race problem? If it happens in a rural area, informal settlement, if it happens on a farm, it's definitely, it's, it's a crime. Really strong views here coming through. What will it take to, for the president to fire the police minister and putting somebody competent in there? What will it take? It is a failure of governance. The level of crime is higher than what the police can cope with. Deal with issues of poverty. These are issues of unemployment, fixed society says. I'm back in Deep Slut to catch up with Abel. Oh. So you're saying this street has been safe? Well, compared to others. Yeah. The community has built a gate for protection. It's where Abel waits for his wife to come home from work. What time does your wife come back? It's a clock, because it's very far. Do you worry about her when she comes home? Yeah, that's why I wait here. I open the gate and stand outside and wait for her to come. Mm -hmm. Like most people of working age in Deep Slut, Abel is unemployed. So this is how you spend your days? Yeah, during the week, I, I, I stay like this. Mm. Then weekend, yeah, weekend, you know, it's from Friday. You can, you'll never rest. You have to go out and try to rescue your community as such. Mm. Yeah. When criminals hear about you coming to the neighborhood, what threat do you pose to them? As a patrolers, our duty is to save our community, not to kill. Have you killed someone? No, not at all. Oh, right. I can't kill someone where else uh, I'm fighting against this crime. Mm. How can I kill someone whilst my intention is to save them? That's why I'm in a patrol. I'm trying to save my community and also my family. Let me be specific to you. I under in deep sweat it's very dangerous. If you can stay here at till nine o'clock and walk out, I'm telling you, you won't reach where you are going. These shoes of yours will be taken. The cell phone that we are using will be taken by the criminals. So in that situation, we as a community, you think we, we can stand for that and laugh and say, no, it's fine. No, because our community comes first. Every forum say, that farmers are in danger and they are under attack, they feel that they are protecting their families and their communities, much like you say you're doing the same for your community and your family. <laughs> what they told you, they, uh, they're out of their mind. We blacks, we don't have what the facilities that they have. We blacks, we don't have that. And you saw that night when we, when we were walking together, there was no one who was driving, no one who has a gun, no one who has a bulletproof. It was just reflectors and the shambok. There's a few white guys that they are not good to the black community. There's a few 
black people that they are dangerous to the white community. We don't have enough security. We just rely on the patrolling. Mind your steps here. Yeah. Just come straight to here. The gates are locked. You cannot go through that street. And why are they locked? It's because they are preventing the movement and the criminals not to come through. Remember, we are trying to minimize the movement and the killings of the people in our streets. Yeah, it's all in you. Sorry, Babu. It's kind of a thing. Take your bags and use that other gate because this one is locked. Okay. Hey, Vimba! Hey, Vimba! Oh, God. Yeah, it's a policeman. Why does someone turn you around? Oh, mama, you change the A policeman has just been shot. He was off duty. They just hijacked him. Him and his girlfriend, they take his his car and the, the, the gun. So what's going to happen now? There's a backup that is running up and down to search for the car, the car that he uh, has been hijacked. So this is a regular occurrence? Yeah, this is a regular occurrence situation that is happening. Patrolers, the ambulance. Patrolers, the law enforcement, they are trying to do their job. The way life it is now in Deep Slot, no one is safe. Even those who are in the sheds who are sleeping now, they just pray God that God can make a, a mercy for them to wake up tomorrow. Are you going to continue the patrol after seeing that? Yes, sir, we are going down again. We are ready to die for our community. If they can hijack the police like this and took the gun, and what is happening now, it will bring the attention also to the government to bring more law enforcement. Even with citizens as dedicated as ABLE, South Africa is going to need more than just volunteers to fight crime. When we were doing the patrols, yes. you stopped a young man, you questioned him, and you beat him. Yes. What right do you have to do that? We need to force the safety of our community. So you're saying you're protecting him by hitting him? Not really, but we, we must show that we, we don't need anyone at, at night on the street. You're not answering my question. I'm asking you what gives you the right to harass, because they're also community members. Uh, I, I don't know if you, that mm. question that we are asking mm. you, you're asking st uh, specific me or Well, the yes, as, a, as someone who's not an officer of the law. Remember, deep sleep is our, it's our place. And if we don't, we don't fix that, our deep sleep, no one will fix this deep sleep. Losing a loved one to violence is an experience many South Africans have in common. For some of us, all we can do is make bitter peace and try to move on with our lives. Both these communities live in fear, but class, which in this country is so closely linked to race, class determines who has a better chance at safety. 
And if we don't address inequality, which is at the core of the crime problem, I'm afraid that we're going to continue to be vulnerable, and not just to crime, but also each other. Because if everyone is always coming from a place of desperation and fear, and if everyone is willing to do whatever it takes to survive, I can only imagine the kinds of violence we're yet to see.